Hi, I'm James Miller, the online ministry specialist at Pine Island United Methodist Church in Pine Island, Minnesota. We're so glad you found this video. If you'd like to see them all, make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss a single one. Hi, it's great to have you with us. We are so glad that you found this video. I'm Tony Fink. I'm the pastor appointed to serve the Pine Island, Minnesota area for the United Methodist Church. I'm James Miller. And while I've been sick this past week, I'm finally coming back, and I'm the online ministry specialist at Pine Island United Methodist Church. And James, it's great having you back in the saddle again. So Good to be uh, back. Thank you. In this week's video, our children are going to be sharing the meaning of Christmas and Jesus Christ with us. Um, they're going to be presenting their Christmas program that's called Christmas Bah Humbug. Um, we're also going to be joining new members into to our congregation today. Now, this is something that we call our Worship Highlights video. This is a shorter version of our worship experience here in Pine Island. If you'd like the complete worship service, that can be found at our website. Um, that's piumc.org. That version has all of our music, all of our prayers, um, all the different parts of the service. And we're glad that you've connected with us, be it by this video, live, digital campus, all kinds of ways to do it. But you found us here and now, and we're so glad you're here. So if you'd like to say hi to us, just click contact us at the top of the web page, or you can go to Facebook and just click the like button. Let us know you came by. Um, I did just mention the digital campus. What is that? Well, you have to go and you'll find out. The link is at piumc.org. And one other thing that we do at the digital campus, Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock Central Time for about 45 minutes, you see the mug, uh, that's where we hang out for a digital coffee house. It's a reprieve from the stress of the week where we just hang out and fellowship. There's no agenda. You don't even have to stay the whole time. It's just kind of drop in, drop out whenever you're ready. Come hang out. Tell us how things are going. It's just fellowship for fellowship's sake. We'd love to see you. Yes, that's our digital campus. That's how you're finding us now. But you can guess we also have a physical presence here, and it's here in Pine Island, Minnesota. Um, you can find our address. You can find the times of worship. You can even find directions to the church on our webpage. Um, I want to let you know on Sunday mornings, we have worship inside at 9 o'clock. We meet in our sanctuary. Um, we go out to the parking lot, and we have worship out there at 1030 on Sunday mornings. And then between the two worship services, we have um, Sunday school for our children and youth, and we also have a time of coffee fellowship in the back of the sanctuary for everybody else. And if you ever join us in time for the live stream or even just catch the end of the hour, you can join us for digital a coffee fellowship. This is different from what I just mentioned on Wednesdays. Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock till about 10 30 central, we hang out and just fellowship over coffee. You have to bring the coffee. I invite you to bring a friend. Please show up and don't leave right at the end of service. It's a really good time for everybody. But since you're here now, I want to thank you for joining us for the shorter version of our worship experience this week. And we really hope to see you next week. Yeah. And friend, it's our hope, it's our prayer that you will be blessed by this week's service. Too much shopping, too much money spent, oh people, I don't really like too much parties. Stores too crowded, push and shove, a Christmas tree, bah humbug.
Merry Christmas, bah humbug. I don't know why you are so jolly. It's just another time of the year. People are hurrying around, pushing and shoving, driving too fast, eating too much, bah humbug. I'm sorry you feel that way. Listen to this carol and perhaps it will tell you why we are so joyful. I still don't see it. Christmas is just about someone born a long time ago. It doesn't make any difference to me. It's just a waste of time and money. Maybe if we explain the letters of Christmas, you understand. May we? Well, I guess. Go ahead. See, Christ Jesus has come from heaven. H, holy son of God. R, righteous emperor. I, an infant born in the stables. S, a star which shone so bright. T, tidings of joy to all people on earth. M, a lonely manger where baby Jesus slept. A, angels at sun that night. S, a savior sent from heaven, a shepherd for his people, the son of God. Christmas, Christmas. These letters spell Christmas. They tell us that God loves everyone. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Say, isn't that John 3, 16? I learned that a long time ago when I went to Sunday school. Say, isn't that John 3, 16? That's the meaning of Christmas. God sent Jesus into the world as a tiny baby to tell of God's love for all people. Those poor shepherds were the first to hear the good news, and they shared it with others. Wise men traveled from far away to honor him with gifts. Jesus was the first and best Christmas gift. He promised eternal life for all people, for all people everywhere. Well, this sort of makes sense. Sounds like Christmas was a miracle. But how do you know all this is real? Do you believe in the Bible? Yes, I guess so. It was important to me a long time ago. Then listen to the story told in the second chapter of Luke, verse 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Cornelius was the governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time for her came to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him in the inn. In that region there were shepherds in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see... I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you born this day in the city of David, a a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And then suddenly the multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among among those whom whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go on now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made it known and had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Say, have I been dreaming? It's almost like I was there in Bethlehem. The birth of Jesus did happen, didn't it? Yes, over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. Yes, I do believe. I believe in the miracle. Jesus came for earth to me. Thanks for helping me believe. Why don't we shout the good news to everyone? What's that sound about telling everyone? 
Go tell it on the mountain? Yes, that's it. Let me sing it with you. Well, good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. Did you guys do a great job doing the Christmas program? Did they do a great job doing the Christmas program? <laughs> but you know what? I have a problem today, because in my orange backpack, what I want to talk about can't fit into it. Who do you think I'm going to talk about in my orange backpack? Well, Tootsie Rolls are in there. <laughs> they got it. But I want to talk about you guys. Because sometimes you think that you have to be a grown-up to talk about Jesus and tell people about how special he is. But did you guys just do it? Yeah, yeah you did with all these people. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Yeah. So, oh, I got another problem today, too. Because usually at the end, I hand out, what do I hand out at the end? Tootsie Rolls. But I didn't give the children's message. You guys did. So guess who's going to hand out the Tootsie Rolls? Us guys. Yeah, you guys. So let me go get my pack. Do you want to volunteer to do it? Okay, thanks for volunteering right there. <laughs> Parents, adults, notice that. <laughs> you want to do it? Sure. Watch out. There's stuff up here. Everyone can hear me. So, again, here's the quiz. Do I hand out one Tootsie Roll? Do I hand out a bunch? Yeah. Why do we hand out a bunch? Because Jesus loves overflows from us. Okay, can you, it's kind of heavy. Can you, you want to hang on to it? You want me to hold it? Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, so when you get your Tootsie Rolls, just say your first name, okay? Now, there's only about a thousand here, so kind of take it easy, okay? So, can I, um, Margie, can I have you hold the bag, and I'll hold the microphone, and we'll just kind of go down this way. So, what's your first name, Josie? You're not Josie. No wonder you get messed up. Maggie. What's your first name? Shia. Lydia. That was Tamron. If you want to follow along, it's in your bulletin, too. And for those um, joining us from on home, trust me, they're actually sitting down here. Yeah, yeah Dean's saying, yeah, they're kind of they're low. Savannah. What's your first name? Savannah. Did you catch that? Okay. What's your first name? Tara. Yeah, don't forget Margie with Tootsie Rolls. Milo, what's your first name? Milo. What's your first name? And Chase. Oh, you're going to have to move your Tootsie Rolls a little bit. Chase. Chase. Very good. And we have three children sick with, the, with us today. I know two. Clara, Adia, and Noah. 
Yeah. So, but there, some of them, they might be like watching us like right now too. So, joining us that way. Oh, did, did the grown-ups get Tootsie Rolls? Except for the two musicians, because you can't have Tootsie Rolls right now. So, so, as we go. So, at this point, the kids have shared the faith of Jesus Christ with us. Now it's time for us to give thanks to God and consider how we can share our lives with Jesus and with those we know. And this is the time where they offer ourselves and our gifts to the work of Jesus. We continue our service today as Rick comes forward and leads us in our scripture reading. Whoop. Lots of stuff moved around this morning. All right. Good morning. My name is Rick Armsey. I'm your scripture reading for this morning. Uh, please uh, join with me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read, and your word proclaim, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 2 to 11. Now when Jesus heard in prison about these things Jesus was doing, but now when John was uh, heard, in, heard in prison, uh, about Je the things Jesus was doing. He sent word to his disciples, uh, asking his disciples, he sent word by his disciples to Jesus, asking, are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus responded, go report to John what you hear and see. Those who were blind are able to see. Those who were crippled are walking. People with skin diseases are cleansed. Those who were deaf now hear. Those who were dead are raised up. The poor have good news proclaimed to them. Happy are those who don't stumble and fall because of me. When John's disciples were gone, Jesus spoke to the crowds about John. What did you go out in the wilderness to see? A stock blowing in the wind? What did you go out to see, a man dressed up in refined clothes? Look, those who wear refined clothes are in royal palaces. What did you go out to see, a prophet? Yes, I tell you, 
and more than a prophet. He is the one of whom it is written, look, I'm sending my messenger before you who will prepare your way before you. I assure you that no one has ever been born, no one that has ever been born is greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Rick. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus responded, go, report to John what you hear and see. Our children have just shared with Jesus with us. Did they do a good job? Yeah, they did. But you know what? Each week, every week, our call, your and my call, our commission is to share the good news of Jesus with others. Sometimes we forget that. And then when I bring it up to church members, you know what the question always is? Ooh, how do we do it? How do we share Jesus Christ, the love of Jesus, with those we know? You know, it's just not a hypothetical question. And in just a few minutes, we're going to be asking Jolene and Mary and Josh and Carol and Connie and Jacob and Jeremy if they promise to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. You know where that question is, right? We've all answered it. Remember, when they join the church, I'm going to ask if they're going to support the ministry of Pine Island United Methodist Church by their prayers, their presence, their gifts, their service, and their witness, the witness part. Well, we share Jesus Christ with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors. We do it by sharing our story, our story of how Jesus has made a difference in our lives. We do this by being witnesses to others of, of what we have seen, of what we have heard as we follow Jesus. Each one of us here has our story to tell, youngest to oldest. Now here's the part that scares people, scares church members, because we go, oh, the job is so big. But here's the secret. When we share the love of Jesus, we don't have to convince the other person that Jesus is the Messiah. That's not our job. We don't have to convince the other person that, that Jesus is the Son of God. We don't have to convince them that Jesus will change their lives. You know why? It's because Jesus, Jesus, if he just has the chance, does all the heavy lifting of proving to the persons that we talk to, of proving to them that he can be and that he is their Savior, the Messiah, the one for whom they've been waiting. All we have to do is what? Is tell our story. All we have to do is be a witness to what we have heard and seen and felt in our lives. John sent us. Are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Jesus responded, go, report to John what you hear and see. Those who were blind are able to see. Those who were crippled are now walking. People with skin diseases are cleansed. Those who were deaf now hear. Those who were dead are raised up. The poor have good news brought to them. So it is up to us to tell our family, our friends, our neighbors, how Jesus has changed our lives. And it doesn't stop there because you and I, we need to be at work transforming the world so that people can see Jesus at work in what we do. Remember what Jesus 
talking to John's disciples? He didn't have to convince you. He just says, go report what you see. If we're doing the right stuff, when we talk to people, we, also, we need to do it. Say, hey, report what you see. Here's a quiz. Here. Are we feeding the hungry? Yeah. I should have a new member class for everybody here. You know, I'm just saying that. Hey, are we feeding the hungry? Yeah. Give one or two examples this week. Food shelf. Yeah, we're going to hear about that later. We even got a picture of it. Okay? Food shelf. Before and it started and now. Not now, Barb. It's coming later. Have to stay to the end of the service. Yeah, love project. We're feeding the hungry with the love project. Are we praying for those and caring for those who come to us asking for help? Yeah, we talked about it last week. Do they need to be members of our congregation for us to pray for them? Do they have to walk into our building before? No. First time they walk in, we do it. Are we providing clothing for school children and infants? Any examples? Undies, yeah. Holiday helpers working with the school. Baby closet. So are we feeding the hungry, praying for, and caring for those who come to us, providing clothing to people? Are we? Yes. And not only that, our church is being renewed and revived. We are reaching new people. We are making new disciples of Jesus Christ who will in turn continue to transform the world. So go, not yet, but go. Share the story with your family and your friends and your neighbors of how Jesus is alive, of how Jesus is active in your life. Go and report to them what you hear and see. Something to celebrate? Say yes. Yes. Oh, there's another celebration. We have new people joining the church this morning. So I want to invite our um, new um, people joining the church to come forward. Connie Carroll, Jacob. I'm trying to think who else is with us this morning. Jay Josh is there. Oh, I don't have my microphone. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to have you guys just line up there. Okay. So, if you want to follow along, it's on page 33, or just kind of follow along to the big stuff on the wall, too. So, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And then through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. And it's my honor this morning to present to you some candidates to join our church today. So I'm going to kind of start on this side. So Connie will be joining us today. Um, Connie joins by profession of faith. So she's going to profess her faith in Jesus Christ in front of a crowd for us this morning. Her husband Jacob is joining. Jacob is joining by transfer from Lands Lutheran. Um, Carol is joining also by transfer from Lands Lutheran. Um, don't ask them if they know each other. They're all related. Josh is joining as coming into the church um, from no other church. So he's joining the church fresh. Okay. But he has confessed his faith in Jesus earlier. Um, also, we we're missing a couple people. Um, Jeremy Ryan um, just told me this morning that he's sick and can't make it. Jeremy will be joining the church. And is Jeremy online? Okay, Jeremy's with us. Um, so <laughs> you're looking back. Who's, who, there's a crowd of people in back? There are a crowd of people back there. Um, but Jeremy will be joining, um, coming into a church for the first time, or into this church from not a transfer. Um, Mary Gillard. Um, also can't make it this morning. She's recovering at home from being in the hospital. I have a thumbs up. Mary is with us. Uh, Mary will be transferring in from West Concord United Methodist Church. And then Jolene will be joining us today. Jolene is with us. Um, Jolene will be transferring in from Fairmont United Methodist Church. Um, I'm just going to say a word here because back in the olden days of people, you, you guys turn and you, that, turn and face me because that way it's not quite so nerving. Just forget that anybody's standing behind you. So Josh, turn around and face me. Um, let Carol know to come around. 
That way it doesn't seem like you're, you're, just, you're just sitting in the front pew at this point. Um, but back in the olden days, you know, people would say, oh, pastor, I'm sick, I can't make it to church. Or, hey, pastor, I can't make it because I'm someplace between Florida and Minnesota on the road, okay? Do we live in the olden days anymore? No, they're with us watching online. I'm hoping Jolene is, is safe on the side of the road rather than driving at 90 miles an hour. But, but anyway, all those people, these are our candidates that are be joining our church. Now, as I mentioned, um, Connie, I knew it wasn't Carol. Uh, Connie is going to be joining by um, confession of faith. So, Connie, I have some special questions to ask you. All of you have, asked these, have been asked these questions before, though, but I want to ask these of you. Connie, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And according to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? Yeah, very good. Um, I think the next slide is going to come up. So I'm going to ask the same question of all of you. Do you, as Christ's body of the church, we are from both the rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God. We will pray for them that they might be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Okay. And as we move ahead, I want you to remember, you remember, you don't remember your baptism, but you remember that you are baptized? So remember your baptism and be thankful. And all of you, remember your baptisms and be thankful. That was quick and easy, wasn't it? Oh, it gets better. So now, everyone here is a part of the Church of God, the great big universal church. Um, but we have some people that are coming into the United Methodist Church for the first time. And that, is another slide? I don't think, I don't remember what I have for the slides up there. Yep, there we go. So, as a member of Christ's universal church, Will you be loyal to Christ in the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Okay, we got four I wills up here, and there's a delay because it takes a while to go around the world. Do we have thumbs up for, um, let's see, Jeremy would be a, a, a yes on this one. There it goes, okay. And again, that's, that's just the time delay. It's not that Jeremy was thinking about it, okay. And it's going to come again in just a minute. Okay, so now all of you are part of the United Methodist Church. Woohoo! Okay, you're crazy a Methodist. Okay, now every all the ministry takes place in our local congregation. Okay, so we're going to pull up the next slide. Okay. Oh, maybe not. Let me let me flip back here to the right question. Okay. So this is for everyone, you four, and everyone, and those joining us online, as a member of this congregation. Will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. I will. We have four up here. And again, it'll take a second for the other three to come up. Thumb, thumb, thumb. They must have been pretty ready for that one. So at this point, I want you four to turn around. And I want to introduce to you the newest members of our congregation. Let's welcome them. Okay, now again, we're in a new era. If you can, stand up, turn around, and look at, at Dean there and back. So I'm talking to you guys there. Everyone stand up, because we're going to welcome those who are joining online this morning, too. So everybody just wave, because the sound isn't going to make sense to them. But if we wave, that works. So welcome. Welcome to worship. Welcome to our congregation this morning. Okay, now turn around, sit down. You guys aren't done yet, okay? Because are we Methodists here? Say yes. Are we Methodists here? And we have like lots of words every time. Say yes. Yes. Okay, so let's continue on. 
Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Let me offer this blessing. The God of all, oh, I'm going to have you guys face me because this is your blessing. Okay, here we go. And those online. The God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Amen? Amen. And let us celebrate the newest members of our congregation. Oh, but wait, there's lovely parting gifts. Okay, so this is your certificate of confirmation. Pretty cool. Okay, I'll give it to you in a minute. And oh, and along with that, let me find the right box. Oh, look, I've got offering envelopes for you. Okay, now I want to say a word. One, your offering envelopes are on the back table right now. The other thing is um, we had one of our members um, before the first time this person came to church talk to me the week before and said, I don't know if, you know about church, do I have to pay money to come in? Okay, like a, like a movie theater or something? What do you think I said? No, you don't have to pay an entrance fee to come. You know, this is our gift to you, is, is offering Jesus Christ, okay? Now, I didn't tell this person that there's a hook, because like if you get convicted about Jesus and join the church, you might want to support the church, okay? So there's no membership fee for anybody here, but if you believe in what we're doing, well, you might want to do something to support the ministry so the ministry continues. Okay? Sound like a fair deal? Someone say, you, some of you say yes. 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 Okay. Just want to make sure. So, so let me hand out these, these lovely gifts. Thanks again for joining us this morning. So go, be witnesses of what you hear and see. Those who are blind are able to see. Those who are crippled are walking. People with skin diseases are cleansed. Those who were deaf now hear. Those who were dead are raised up. The poor have good news proclaimed to them. So go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.